the Japanese Bunka knife. Probably one of the sexiest knives that have ever been created. And on top of that, it's an absolute joy to work with. Now in this video, I'm gonna describe the various characteristics that make a Bunka unique, demonstrate the best ways to use a blade with this type of shape, and show you a few tips that will make your food prep with a Bunka even smoother. What's up y'all, I'm Chef Brandon with Cutlery and More, and I collect knives. I've been collecting them for over a decade. I've amassed about 94 in my collection. And although the Bunka is newer to the various styles of knives that I have all over this room, I must say that it has quickly become one of my favorites and my go-to for everyday prep. Is it Bunka or Bunka? Honestly, I don't care how you pronounce it. I'm from New Jersey, I say things like water. What matters more importantly is understanding how to use this blade properly. In Japanese, bunka translates to culture, but today bunka basically means a kitchen knife. And like a German style chef's knife or a Japanese gyoto or santoku, the bunka is an all purpose workhorse that is great for prepping fruits, vegetables, meat, and fish. Now most bunkas are going to fall between six to seven inches long with the blade, but there are smaller looking bunkas, which are technically called a co-bunka, but a lot of these are marketed as prep knives or utility knives, or you can call them what I call them, which is the baby bunka. The two key features of a bunka knife. First would be the reverse tanto tip. So a tanto tip would be angled down this way. So the spine would be longer than the edge. In this case, it's the opposite. So a reverse tanto, you have a shorter spine and a longer edge. As you can see, the angle of each of these bunkas varies, but most of them are somewhere around a 45 degree angle. And the other key characteristic of a bunka is a primarily straight edge, which makes this knife ideal for tap chopping, push chopping and slicing. Tap chopping is more in the wrist, push chopping more from the arm and then slicing from the arm as well. Let's get started with some tap chopping. Now with the tap chop, you wanna be able to use every part of the blade, but the firmness of the product that you're cutting is going to determine what part you'd like to use. For softer ingredients, you wanna use the tip, for medium, the middle, and then for firmer ingredients like a carrot here, you would use the base of the blade. For something like an onion or a cucumber that's decent size but not very firm, you can use the middle of the bunka. The bunka has a very fine edge because it's sharpened around 10 degrees, unlike a lot of German or Western style knives that are between 14 and 20 degrees. So when it comes to real intricate cuts or using the tip of the blade, it's an absolute breeze. And this downward point, it's almost like a laser beam going into the product that you need. It just locks on. So let's say you need to thinly slice garlic using the tip of the blade in a tap chop motion is phenomenal with this knife. Quick tip with a bunka. Since the edge is very straight compared to a lot of other knives, if you put it on an angle on your cutting board, you'll see that it's basically flush. So you can use the bunka almost like a bench scraper, put it on a slight angle, and then you can just push your product up onto the knife, and then you can go right into your pan for cooking or move into a mise en place container. So as I said earlier, the tap chop is more in the wrist, whereas the push chop is kind of your entire arm. And the bunka, because of just the feel of this blade, it's like an extension of your arm. It's absolutely amazing. So for the push chop, you're basically going to come into the product on an angle where you're basically slicing at the same time. So you come in, down, and you push through. Now, I would much rather see someone doing the push chop with confidence, going nice and slow, taking their time, 
with precision than tap chopping super fast and having uneven cuts, not being confident and having the fear of filleting off the front of their finger. Not fun. For larger jobs, a bench scraper is definitely a lot better to have than using the side of the knife. And it's a lot safer too, just saying. Something like a cucumber is phenomenal for either tap or push chopping. It's basically whatever you're comfortable with. This is the push chop. You can also use the spine of the knife to move product around your cutting board. And here's the tap chop. myself some cucumber salad tonight, a little salt, pepper, olive oil, rice, wine, vinegar, and some hot honey. Anytime you're working with a product that starts to get more than an inch, two inches above your cutting board, the tap chop starts to open up the door for disaster. Just being totally honest with you, the further away you come from the cutting board, the harder it is to aim when you're coming back down. So if you have something like cabbage and you're making slaw and you want a fine slice, then you can either do that. You can slice, which is going to take a little bit more time and you're moving the blade a lot more, but the push chop, is a great way to get even cuts, take your time, you come up, you aim, you press down, come up, you aim, you press down. You don't have to start your downward push until you're already into the product. So if you're still getting to learn a knife and developing your skills, I highly recommend focusing on the push chop for these types of products whenever you're using a bunka. And finally, slicing is an absolute joy with a bunka knife. Take advantage of the tip, okay, for two different things. One, it's just, again, a laser beam. It can hone in on the end of the product that you need to work with, and then you can just pull right through. Now, something like a mini pepper or even a regular bell pepper like this, you don't have to worry so much about it sticking to the side of the knife because of how low profile the product is. Now, if you're used to using a Santoku knife or any type of knife that has the hollows on the side of the edge, good luck finding that on a bunka. It's most likely not going to happen. So instead, you can get one that has the hammered finish. These little divots with these air pockets prevent product from sticking as much or in some cases not sticking at all. But when it comes to something like a tomato, they love to stick to nearly any blade. So if I were to go like this and slice, ooh, pretty good, not sticking. Let's try with this one. Okay, st sticks, a oh, there you go, sticks a little bit. But let's say you like the style of knife better and you don't want anything to stick. Well, then what you have to do is angle the blade up about like this. And what you're gonna see is that tip of the blade is going to cut through the product. And because the way it's angled, we have less surface area contact. So that is going to completely minimize or prevent anything from sticking. Raw chicken, beef, fish, you name it. Regardless of whether you have a hammered finish or hollows on the side, meat likes to stick. So with the bunka and this reverse tonto tip, slicing up chicken, say for stir fry, taco night, chicken cheese steaks, it's an absolute breeze because you don't have to worry about meat just building up on the side of the edge. Now with something this sticky, even angling the blade up isn't going to prevent it completely from sticking. It's going to stick. But if you're doing this upward angle and you pull through, you can see where the chicken is nice and thin. It's releasing it right away. Now, as I get up where it's a little bit thicker, you might notice that it starts to stick a little bit just like that. But by the time you come through to get your next slice, it pushes the previous one right off. 
because again, there's less surface area. So yes, it's not 100% when it comes to not sticking, but it's nowhere near keeping it flat like this, totally stuck, totally stuck, stuck, and now it's coming up over the side of the knife, which is annoying and totally unsafe. All right, folks, suppose your preferred cutting technique is the rock chop or that European style of cutting where the tip of the knife stays on the cutting board at all times and you're creating this rock and roll type of motion with the base of the blade and you're mainly cutting with the base to the middle of the blade. If that is your preferred style of cutting, then listen up. I have two Enzos here. They both have the same length blade and similar height. The difference is the handle as well as the curvature of these two knives. You can see that the one on the right here has a little bit more of a curve at the tip there. Here's the deal. When you're using this style, the hand forge in that rock chop motion, sometimes you'll find the very tip will kind of dig into the cutting board, which you don't want and the shorter Bunka knives dig in even more. So if you want all of the benefits of the Bunka for the size, the shape, the curvature of the blade, you've got the reverse Tonto tip, just the awesomeness of the way it looks, then I would recommend going with this Enzo instead if you are used to that European style rock chop or mincing when you're pivoting with the tip of the blade in the cross chop motion. All right, folks, there you have it, the Bunka. So regardless of the style of cuisine that you cook, this knife is an absolute workhorse. It can tackle almost every task in your kitchen prep lineup, whether you're working with fruit, veggies, meat, fish, tap chopping, push chopping, slicing, it's absolutely outstanding. If you're looking for that rock chop, just get the right curvature to the blade. And don't forget about the little baby Bunka. I'm Chef Brandon with Cutlery and more. Thanks so much for tuning in. Mm, it's just a sexy night. I love it.